for those of you applying to computer science programs you will realize that understanding what it's going to cost you in terms of tuition fee or living or whatever is so very complicated it's ironic considering these are computer science program that they should have slightly clearer websites right we understand that it's very difficult some universities give you fees on a per credit basis some tell you what it's going to cost per semester we do not know how long it's going to take to finish the program cost of living becomes very complicated because meal plans are included which you won't take well don't worry we are going to clarify all this confusion and give you definitive numbers in terms of how a masters in computer science is going to cost you at some very popular universities as a bonus we are also going to cover what you can expect to earn post different roles after you graduate from these programs this is a super clear roi analysis so you should stay tuned so we are going to make this video engaging and meaningful for you so we structured it a particular way there's no meaning in just presenting you a list of universities and then what the so called tuition fees mentioned on the website per credit or whatever we are going to categorize these universities into two halves and the other part of this video you have to consider is that we are only considering universities that are worth going to there might be universities that are far cheaper as well but trust me with the current job climate in the united states you only want to go to a reputed university to secure a job so we classify the universities worth going to at a particular tuition fee level which is higher and a particular tuition fee level that's lower so let's move on now the first set of universities that i'm going to mention are big brands right these are definitely computer science programs that will pop up in your head and on any google search when you are considering cs degrees these degrees are also expensive but as you will see in the later part of this video it's not necessary for big brand universities to be expensive but these are the ones that are expensive and they will cost you in terms of tuition fee between 75 to 90000 so why am i giving you a range and not the exact estimate the reason being the cost of attending each of these universities will depend greatly on how long you choose to take to complete the degree that's why i'm giving you a range so that you have an idea i'm going to mention some of these universities and of course our editor is going to put in a statistic with the names of these universities so you can read now some of these universities which are obviously great brands and which will cost you between 75 to 90k are cmu mit stanford columbia the university of pennsylvania nyu ucla uc berkeley so 75 to 90k in tuition might sound a little scary well don't worry i have some slightly better news for you with some fantastic universities that are within the 55 to 65k range in terms of tuition fee some of the names which are very popular and which you'll recognize in this bracket are purdue texas a&m georgia tech the university of texas at austin stony brook university brilliant location which gives you access to the new york ecosystem at a fraction of the price by the way moving on we have the university of massachusetts at amherst san jose state university and if you're looking at something a little safer then sunny buffalo as well now i might have missed mentioning some of these universities verbally but i hope our editor does a good job and puts it up in the graphic I'll put that in the video as well. As you will see in the later part of this video, when you're talking about salaries, when you're shortlisting universities, it's a good idea to have a balance of both these, right? And I will explain why eventually. Of course, this is not the only cost that you'll incur. There's also the question of cost of living and food. Here's a simple formula: If you're going to universities that are in big cities, which are expensive, like in LA or in New York or even Chicago. right you can budget for about 1500 dollars per month in terms of your entire cost of living another tip which will help you factor the tuition fee and also the cost of living calculation if you are doing non thesis track programs or m engineering programs or ncs programs at these universities it will take you about one and a half years or three semesters to complete the program therefore your cost will end up becoming lower Additionally if you're doing a thesis track program then it will likely take you a full 2 years to finish the program which will push the cost up moving on to another very important factor that i promised you the starting salaries now if you go to a good university because hiring structures at the top tech companies like a meta or a google or an amazon are so clearly structured they don't really differentiate in terms of the salaries depending on the university that you're coming from of course if you go to a better university the number of opportunities that come through will be higher but the salaries largely remain pretty similar for most of the universities that we are mentioning in this video that's the reason why i'm not talking about some much cheaper universities because getting a job after them will be a real struggle if you are going into core computer science role like an ai engineer or a machine learning engineer where you're literally writing code and building some of this tech 
the salaries are around the 135,000 to 145,000 dollar range on average. So you can do a simple return on investment calculation. It sounds pretty great. If you're moving into more software engineering related roles, then the salaries can begin from about $110,000. They might go up if you have a little bit of prior work experience, but 110 is usually the base. This base remains sort of similar if you're moving into product management roles. But of course, if you want to move into product management and you have three or four years of experience prior, then the starting salaries can be even closer to the $130,000, $135,000 range. So sorry to interrupt the flow of information in this video, but we are here to tell you something very important. We are going to be in Bangalore on the 1st of September at 3 p.m. at Draper Startup House in Kormangla. If you want to drop by for absolutely free and interact with us, please feel free to do so. Additionally, if you want to host us in your city or want us to visit your campus, then please reach out to us on any of our social medias, Instagram or LinkedIn, and we'd be happy to coordinate and plan a visit. Now that you've analyzed these numbers and I'm telling you that even if you go to a well-reputed university that's very expensive or even more reasonably priced, the salaries remain by and large the same, you understand why I'm asking you to maintain a balance between both types of universities. The other point of contention could be, okay, if the salaries remain about flat, why should I spend so much more at a Carnegie Mellon or a UPenn or a Columbia? Now, this is because there is an intangible benefit that you have to calculate when you're going to big brands. The network that you build with your peers and the alumni network that opens up after you go to a big brand university that is invariably expensive is incredibly, incredibly strong. In future, if you want to start your own company and you're looking for a co-founder or if you're looking to move into a senior position in a startup that's being founded by some alumni from one of these top-notch schools, the number of doors that open up if you go into universities with massive reputed alumni networks is an intangible benefit. Also, tomorrow if you're cold messaging somebody on LinkedIn, if you're from a UPenn or a Columbia, it's more likely that you're going to get a reply. That's why some of these Ivy League schools tend to be a little bit more expensive. That being said, even some school like a Georgia Tech, which is a top-notch computer science program, has a terrific alumni network. So there is no black and white to it. It depends on where your priorities lie and finding a balance list, not only in terms of career outcomes, but also your own profile. So I hope your confusion is a little clear now and you have an idea in terms of what you're going to be investing and what you're going to be making after you do an MS and CS. If you want more such no-nonsense, practical, well-thought-out information, you can get it one-on-one -on -one for absolutely free. Just schedule a free consultation using the link in the description of this video. Thank you.